of Utah's biggest crime cases of 2023 took police on a frantic search to find a foreign exchange student possibly kidnapped and being held for ransom. But in a bizarre twist, detectives discovered he wasn't abducted at all. He was a victim of what they came to learn was cyber kidnapping. So how did they solve it? And in an ABC4 News exclusive, we go in-depth with Riverdale Police for the answer in today's Behind the Badge. These moments, flying overhead police consoling a scared teenager from China, mark the end of a bizarre cyber kidnapping. Found alone in the foothills outside Brigham City, his abductors had convinced him to fake the whole thing. Initially, he still said, I can't tell you stuff or someone could be hurt. So he still thought that this was real. The call to find foreign exchange student Kai Juang first started with panic. Administrators at his high school in Ogden called 911 in late December, relaying word of his disappearance from his family. That the kidnappers contacted the family in China asking for money is not they were going to kill him. The family also received this alarming photo, appearing to show Kai in distress and kidnappers demanding over a million dollars in ransom. It was believed that Kai had been taken from his host family's home here in Riverdale, leaving them in a state of shock. And the anticipation is, God, I hope they find this kid. But as Riverdale detectives began looking into it, they immediately recognized something was off. What I noticed was his right arm here, you could see the clothing is stretched out. Over here, it's all wrinkled and folded down like his arm's down. He's most likely taking a selfie. So it's a over the head selfie shot. That's what made this start off very confusing. We gotta figure out what, why is he taking this picture? Police started searching neighborhood doorbell cameras and found this clip of Kai walking away from his host family's home by himself the morning of his disappearance. We knew at this point, at least him leaving the house was under his own free will. Then searching his bedroom, his host family says detectives discovered receipts for camping gear and other items not with him the moment he left. And one of the things the officers found in that closet was this generator that was I don't know, 100 pounds. Officers concluded Kai was camping somewhere in Utah's mountains, pretending he was abducted. But why? Riverdale police turned to the FBI, who verified calls from Kai's kidnappers were actually coming from Hong Kong, explaining he was likely the victim of cyber kidnapping. So they make up all these lies, making Kai believe that if you tell anybody about this, you'll spend two years in prison. Once kidnappers convinced Kai to give them his personal information back home, they contacted Kai's parents, then played the two against each other. We believe they recorded his voice throughout just talking with him. There's technology where you're able to record the voice, and then you can input whatever you want to say, and now you have that person's voice. As the scam deepened, his host family noticed he was more reserved at home, but had no clue he was being manipulated into putting his own life at risk. He must have been terribly afraid. They, whatever they said to him must have scared him within an inch of his life. So where was he hiding? Other Riverdale detectives joined the case and started scouring Kai's cell phone data for clues. Really, we were just looking for any information that just wasn't part of his normal. They found one. Pings from his cell phone five days before show Kai had gone into the mountains above Brigham City. So detectives focused their search there. And at this time, we called DPS and they brought out a helicopter. We also had the drone team out and we hit it hard during the day. But to no avail. As crews struck out from the air, Riverdale Sergeant Derek Ingstrom went out on his own to search on foot. Knowing Kai's background a little bit, how he's not very uh, outdoorsy, um, I thought to myself, well, what would be the easiest route for someone to take like that? And I found a trail that had uh, kind of a makeshift bridge going over the, the stream there, and I just kind of followed that maybe a quarter mile up the mountain. As luck would have it. Kai. That's where he found him. Kai. Yeah. Police. Coming out. You're safe, buddy. Come on out. What had been four days of fear, extortion, and isolation. You're safe, buddy. Your family's safe. Was finally over. Coming out, Kai. Kai was found safe. 
and unharmed. You're safe. You're safe, okay? What was it like when you found him? It was great. I mean, he was obviously very scared. He was cold. He immediately asked if he can call his family. He started crying. The rest of the team joined Kai and Ingstrom on the mountain, packed up his things, and escorted him back to the police station, where officers explained how he'd been scammed. In the office, he just leaned his head back and started laughing, pretty much saying, I'm a fool, I'm a fool. His host family grateful he'd been found and hope people hearing Kai's story are slow to judge what cyber kidnappers convinced him to do. You gotta cut him some slack. I didn't really feel a lot of anger. I mean, I just, I was like, thank God they found this boy. And instead, be grateful what could have ended in tragedy became a moment to celebrate. And in the end, kidnappers scammed Kai and his parents out of $106,000 before police finally found him. He immediately returned to China that night with his family who had came to Utah during his disappearance. So if you'd like to learn more of what those kidnappers said to Kai to convince him to fake his kidnapping, we have the full interview with the lead detective on our website at abc4.com.